Well, so uh, Rosie found the rabbit den. Today we're gonna to talk about 10 tips, tricks, and tasks for pallet forks. I've been looking for a way to use this Kubota orange. And I think we can get a little bit of harmony going on here. A little bit of yin and yang, you know, a little bit of good and evil. We're gonna go ahead and start out with a tip that a viewer left as a comment a few videos back. I can't remember which one it was and I couldn't find um, this person to give them recognition, but I wanna say thank you and we're gonna start out with that. And that is painting the tips of your forks to get an easier visual clue of where they're at in their position. So yeah, this is Kubota orange right here and I thought uh, it's a pretty bright, vibrant color, kind of like a hunter's orange, right? So we'll go ahead and paint the tips. I'm sure you have to repaint this periodically depending on how you're using your forks, but for my application when I'm out here a lot, picking up pallets, that kind of thing, it's gonna come in handy. So that's right, we're gonna give you a mixture here, some tips, some tricks with them, some different tasks that you can use pallet forks for. So painting the end of your forks is just one helpful tip. We'll go ahead and get into some others now. And if you like what you see here, make sure you hit subscribe right underneath the video, hit that subscribe button, read through the description as well. A lot of helpful links in there. Go to my Amazon store, check it out. Head to Good Works Tractors. Thanks a lot. Hey, another tip for you here. This is also something that was submitted by a, a viewer left in a comment a while back. Again, my apologies, but thank you very much for watching and leaving that comment. So what is the tip? Well, this right here is called a bucket level indicator. You'll see a lot of different variations of these on John Deere tractors, on Kubotas, on other manufacturers as well. Not every tractor has one of these, but if you do, this tip comes in handy. So right now, this bucket level indicator is doing what it's supposed to do. It's indicating when the bucket is level, when it's lowered all the way to the ground. Well, you can see here that when I have it positioned in the right spot to have a level bucket when it's on the ground, the pallet forks are not in that same position. So the solution to this is to actually put some tape on here or if you have paint or marker, whatever it might be, that way if you have a set of pallet forks or you have a snow pusher and you have a bucket, you have three different attachments that have three different levels on them, you can indicate it on the bucket level indicator and have a position readily available for all three of them without having to fiddle around with loosening this nut here and making that adjustment. Well, so as you can see here, this bend right here, this crook is supposed to be in here uh, for the bucket to be level. And so there's a, a decent difference here in that position. I'm just gonna take a, a small little piece of tape here and, and mark that position right, right there. And then I'm gonna raise this up and put some tape all the way around there. There we go. Now I've got a position for the bucket and now I have a position for the forks. So you had a snow pusher on here, you can make another position for that, even put it in a different color coded piece of tape or paint. You know, a couple things that I really would not recommend doing a whole lot of with your pallet forks, kind of a safety thing or a potential issue with damaging your tractor, or your loader. The first one would be popping roots. Now, I get it. These things are, are kind of designed to almost dig in and get right underneath and, and pop those things out. And so if you have some tiny little stumps or some little saplings and maybe uh, can put the, uh, the, the fork tines here right in the middle where they're almost together and then kind of get underneath them, you're probably okay dealing with that. But if one of the main purposes is looking to pop things out, pop stumps, dig out roots and, and big root balls on a regular basis, I probably wouldn't get a set of pallet forks to do that. It could be very easy, especially if you have them out wide here and you only have one tine that's doing all the work and getting all the stress and the load on it. It could be easy to kind of to torque, you know, your loader frame or the pallet fork frame or something else along those lines. There could be a lot of force exerted right onto uh, everything, you know, both the, the tine here and then even the frame as well. So, you know, so I totally get the practicality of it and I've done it myself, you know, and again, if you're doing it maybe on occasion and you're really conscious about what you're doing, where you're positioned in the tines, that kind of thing to keep an even distribution of the weight, you're probably gonna be okay most of the time. But if it's a main function of what you're looking to do, Maybe I'd try to find a different tool for that job. You know, I've also read about in some forums, guys actually using these things to dig trenches, long trenches, just using one tine, you know, taking the other one off and <laughs> just digging long trenches. And, you know, again, I don't really know if they're necessarily designed to do that kind of thing. So I would uh, probably just encourage you to be very cautious and aware of how you could damage your loader or the frames or the tines or whatever it might be. 
Lastly, this is a safety one, and I know that a lot of you guys do this, but using these things as platforms with somebody else at the operator station, you're climbing up, you put a pallet on here, you built a big, big box like a boom truck would have, and you're lifting way up in a tree and picking fruit or getting up onto high shelves or whatever the case might be, or in the gutters even. Totally nice to, to do that. Um, I would have a hard time trusting anybody else to be operating the loader while that's going on. You know, especially if these are at a little bit higher hydraulic flow, if you have it revved up a little bit, you know, a little jerk, a little accidental bump into the loader joystick there and things get out of hand pretty quickly. So I would caution against doing that. I know a lot of you guys do it. So, you know, I'm just putting that out there. Safety first. So typical fork lengths that I'm gonna sell are gonna be 36, 42, and 48. Now, once you get into some 4,000 pound and larger pallet forks, like these black ones here that you see on my 4066R, you will start to see longer lengths of tines. These ones that are on here are 60 inches. You do wanna make sure you're sizing the length of your fork to the tractor that you're gonna be using. Typically the subcompacts, I would recommend a 36 or a 42 inch. Then as you go larger, you know, you can start to get into the 42, 48 conversation and that kind of thing once you're up into the three and the four series. Again, got the 60 inch on here on the 4066R, it's gonna handle them just fine. She flushed mama out already, but I think the babies are staying put. She's been uh, waiting patiently <laughs> for some time. She'll go sniff around where she chased chased mom up around the building over there and then she'll come right back and uh, just see what she can find. You get them? Is that where they're at? Huh? What do you think Rose? Yeah? So she's having fun keeping her occupied. Besides the tine length itself, and just for reference, these are going to be a 42 inch length tine right here on a John Deere 1025R. One of the other big considerations is going to be the frame, the green or the black frame that's back here that the tines are actually going to attach to. In the last year, year and a half, this lightweight, this 900 pound frame here has become very popular on the subcompacts and then into the 2 series, maybe even some 3 E series tractors. So you may have heard me mention 900 pounds, and now that will be fine on a subcompact, of course, but what about a 2 Series or even a 3 E Series? Well, I'll post a link above here. I did a video last fall, I think it was, where I lifted up 2,000 pounds. I put a set of uh, these lightweight 900 pound rated forks onto a 4R Series tractor and picked up over 2,000 pounds with them. So again, the tines are not the issue here, it's the frame, okay? So these guys are very underrated for what they can actually lift, and so that's why I'm comfortable selling them on the 2 Series and the 3E Series tractor that are gonna technically lift more than 900 pounds of weight, but again, these are gonna do the trick for you. So two big differences here on these lighter weight 900 pound frames versus some larger 2,000 pound forks, for instance. So you're not gonna have the tall headache rack on here that will provide some additional protection if you raised something way up and then rocked it back and it came up over top of here. If you had a load like up here and it rocked back, it could potentially tumble down this way. With the headache rack, you're gonna get protection all the way up somewhere into this vicinity right here and give you more added protection. So what's the trade-off of that if you don't have the headache rack? There's gotta be an advantage, right? Well, number one, they're gonna cost a little bit less and go to my website, Good Works Tractors. I can ship these suckers all over the country. Notice you're gonna see some on pallets here. I have that for an example, so you can see roughly how they're gonna ship out. Always trying to get smarter on how I package things, so it could vary depending on when you're watching the video, but just an example here of how they're gonna be looking. Not only are they gonna be cheaper, but they're also gonna be significantly lighter. So if you look at a comparable setup with the 2,000 pound frame here that has a headache rack on it, it's gonna be about 130 pounds lighter. So when I'm talking about a headache rack, I'm talking about from about this point right here on up, all right? There is, of course, some more material that's back here to account for the additional um, capacity rating to get to that 2,000 pound lift rating. However, this is the main section right here that I'm talking about with the headache rack. You're not gonna have this on that lighter duty set. I wanna make sure I point out the fact that this is for a skid steer setup. I can get it for skid steer. I can get it for John Deere quick attach. I can get it for global. I can get it for a lot of different ones that are some oddball ones as well. The oddball ones may need to be ordered, but rest assured, I can order them. When you talk about tractors that don't have a lot of lift capacity to begin with, less than a thousand pounds or even a little bit over a thousand pounds, well, 130 pounds of weight just that you're picking up, not even a load, not something that's sitting on here, but just the, the forks and the frame itself, that's like 10, 15, 20% depending on the tractor that you have. So instead of just lifting an extra 130 pounds just to get your forks in the air, that 130 pounds of capacity can go into whatever you want to pick up, whether it's a pallet or a log or whatever it might be. And as it's starting to rain, Rosie is settling in for now and she is bound and determined to uh, just kind of wait it out.
What do you think, Rose? Are they still in there? You just gonna wait and see, or you smell them? Yeah. They're in there, huh? Can I get you anything? No? All right, we'll come back and check on you later. So what's the right tine length for you? Well, I can give you a few little tips here to help you make that decision, but ultimately it's up to you to decide the right length. Now I will say I'm pretty comfortable myself not requiring a 48 inch tine to go through a 48 inch pallet. I feel like if you've got a 42 inch tine with just six inches of the pallet sticking out here, that's not actually gonna have a fork through it. I don't think that's a big deal. Every six inches of tine length is gonna add about 10 to 15 pounds, somewhere in that ballpark of weight to the overall weight of the pallet fork assembly itself. Also, the further out you are from the base of your loader arms, right back in here, the less weight you're gonna lift up. So if you have longer tines and then you have a load way out here in the end, you're clearly gonna lift a lot less compared to if you're tucked way back in here. So if you plan on having most of your loads, whatever your application might be, if it's gonna be tucked this area, then why pay for the additional length to have the additional weight for an area that you're not gonna use out here? You know, now if you plan to move a lot of really light material or brush piles, for instance, where you really need more space out here just to stack more brush and that kind of thing and weight's not really a concern, then maybe you do want the additional tine length. Something else to consider with tine length is that the further out you are from the base of the pivot point, every little micro adjustment you make when you're tipping or, or dropping a fork tip, it's gonna be compounded way out here. So imagine if you had your forks cut off right here and you're curling or rolling. Well, a little movement is not gonna move the fork tips very much. However, it's compounded when it's further and further out this way, where those micro little movements become a lot more um, substantial the further out you go. And I definitely realize that with my 60 inch forks, you know, when I'm forking things off of trucks and, or forking them onto trucks or trailers or whatever it might be, and I'm just feathering that control, that loader joystick, those micro little adjustments are really a lot bigger than I want them to be a lot of the time. One of the ways you can offset that is really throttling down your engine. So just putting it on idle or close to idle, and you're gonna have a lower or a slower hydraulic response and get a little bit more fine-tuned control out of that. Something to keep in mind. If I didn't mention it, I do want to remind you, you can get these forks from me at Goodworks Tractors. Go to goodworkstractors.com. can get them packaged up and shipped out to you. Again, all the information on the website there would be happy to help. Some things to keep in mind about shipping. I am constantly trying to find the cheapest possible way to ship. So those methods could change over time. Right now, the cheapest way to ship is to go to a commercial address. So if you can find a commercial address near you, your business, a friend's business, a place with a loading dock in town, that's gonna be your best bet. The next cheapest option is gonna to be to go to a, uh, to leave them at the terminal, right at the destination terminal and just go pick them up, throw them in your truck bed. The lightweight ones, you can put them in the back of a vehicle. The most expensive way is gonna to be to go to a residential address. That does not mean it's going to include a lift gate. It's just these freight haulers, these LTL carriers charge the most amount of money to go to a residential address versus the um, commercial address and holding them at the terminal. I'm gonna give you a quick short list here of varying uses for pallet forks to get those creative juices flowing. So things that I've used them for, things I've heard other customers use them for, maybe even seen online in forums or in pictures as well. So for me, raising ladder stands. You know, if you're a deer hunter like I am, sometimes those ladder stands are a bear. So you can kind of just put the whole ladder stand right here in the middle. That way it's kind of sandwiched in between here and can't fall either side. And then go ahead and just raise them up against your tree and at least get the assistance from the tractor that way. Uh, a creative one, fence posts, you know, just stack up all your fence posts right down there, kind of rock it back a little bit. You got a post hole auger on the backside. That way you just kind of pick them off as you're going down. Storing equipment on racks in your garage or in a barn or even outside on a racking system. You know, if you want to have a more compacted storage area, you know, put those things right on racks. Get a tiered shelving system where you can have one on the, almost on the floor, then, you know, four foot up and then seven or eight foot up too, depending on the tractor and the loader that you have set up. But pallet forks are awesome for that kind of task and just helping to keep things organized. Of course, all you guys with the wood lot, moving brush piles, moving logs, moving timber, all that kind of thing, pallet forks are a poor man's grapple, so they say, and they work really well for that. Other things pallet forks are good for. Let's see here, uh, picking up round bales, moving boulders around, bins of firewood, pallets full of pellets for you, uh, you wood burning stove guys, and of course, anything on a pallet itself, all right? So I got all these pallets in here. These are what pallet forks are getting shipped out on, as well as a lot of the other attachments that I have, but 
you know, I use pallets all the time, and, and I think a lot of you guys, once you have a set of forks too, you'll find yourself either getting pallets to put all your other attachments on and things like that because it's easy to pick them up and move them around, or even other odds and ends that you have around the house. You'll just start skidding things up. That way you can just move from point A to point B, reorganize as needed, and shuffle them around. So that's what you see all my attachments on back here. And on that note, I can help you out with an attachment. I can help you out with a tractor. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and read through the description as well. Stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah, let's check in on Rosie. What's she doing now? Oh, she's snooping around. I think she's given up on the rabbits. Rosie, have you given up on the rabbits? What are you doing, girl? What are you doing, huh? Yeah? Just sniffing around, huh? You like that? That's a pretty good one.